We've finally reached the final part of this series. Only 10 characters remain in this roster to be discussed, and they are the cream of the crop. But what is the point of discussing the characters without thoroughly discussing the quality of the game? The game scored pretty well among critics, scoring a 79 meta score and an 8.1 on IMDb, and a 8.5 on IGN, which is not surprising at all. With every LEGO game up till a few years ago, they were predictable in the best way. You know what to expect when buying a LEGO game. Sure, the voice acting introduced in this game rocked the boat for many people, but you still had the story levels filled with puzzles, a character grid that you slowly unlocked one by one to completion, and many a collectible. The pitfalls of this game... Well, I think you probably have a good idea based on some of the topics I've discussed during this series. The abysmal story that leads to levels shorter than the standard that you see in LEGO games. The way they handled suits and free play could have been better. The suits and free play in LEGO Batman 1 were fine enough, but to only be able to switch suits if the applicable suit pad was in your vicinity in this game? That was lame. The open world, fine as it was, was dark and rainy, which makes sense for Gotham, but it gets a little... Uh, you get used to the sight, and the time of day is always at dawn, or, or dusk. A actually, the sun is on the horizon to the north, which doesn't make sense. Listen, I have a lot of nostalgia for LEGO games, but these are my games. These are the games I played whenever I was inside, before going outside to touch grass. Then in 2011, computers became commonplace in homes and my brain has been rotting ever since. All that to say, LEGO Batman 2 came out during a time when I was expanding my gaming horizons. I played it a little bit, but I didn't fully complete it until years later. So the nostalgia goggles weren't really something I was wearing when revisiting this game for this ranking. I experienced a more objective playthrough of the game, and I wasn't all too impressed. I haven't played LEGO Batman 3 in a while, but I'm comfortable with calling LEGO Batman 2 the weakest of all LEGO DC games. But with that said, it's still worth a playthrough. It's clear that in the comments of these videos, which I read all by the way, that a lot of you guys enjoyed this game, and you might have not clicked on this video period if you didn't like it. So enjoy what you want to enjoy, I guess. Don't let my opinion waver you. But you know, thanks for watching, and let's get a crack a lacking at the final 10 and best characters from LEGO Batman 2. Let's start off this top 10 with the final Batman suit in the game. The Sensor suit is probably the least used suit in this game, but that's mostly due to his exclusive abilities that aren't really used all that often. Firstly, I love the suit. It's probably my favorite in terms of design. The bat suit and the electricity suit don't really vary much from the standard suit. And the power suit just looks a little too round for my taste. But the sensor suit has this dark green color to match the abilities I will soon reveal to you. And the goggles are great too. They emit this red light that, when pointed at an NPC, shows them to be a skeleton. This weird little thing with the goggles is only seen with the sensor suit Batman, and it's always a hoot when a small thing like that is reserved for one character. Not even a character, a suit of a character. The fact that he can see through people leads me to the introduction of not one, but two new abilities, and one of them is exclusive to this here Batman suit. First, the not exclusive one, X-Ray. Whenever you see these green walls, characters with X-Ray can look through them. You can't see the entire wall at once, but you have to move around a circle to see the full extent of the wall in question. Usually, these puzzles involve looking in the wall to find and pull handles. Nothing too crazy. The next ability could be considered crazy, because this ability is seen only with the sensor suit. And it's not like you can switch to the sensor suit whenever you want. The game has to supply you with a suit pad to use this ability seen with no one else. It's called... Stealth. Now, if you watched all 6 hours, 17 minutes, and 6 seconds of my LEGO Avengers ranking, oh my god, I forgot I did that. Stealth isn't new. Frankly, in that game, it's the bottom of the barrel. You push a button, and you turn invisible. You do this to bypass security cameras. It's crazy that such a mundane ability in one LEGO game is enough to bump a character to the top 10 in another. And this suit isn't even technically a character. It, it, you know, it's the extension of another character. Oh, and uh, to cool us down a bit, the sensor suit retains its grapple and battering abilities. Well, 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 if it isn't the best character of LEGO Batman the video game. She dropped a little bit, but still 
barely making the top 10. But I mean, that still isn't as big of a drop as number two, Mr. Freeze. First of all, the new design for Poison Ivy is an insane improvement being based on the 2012 line of Lego sets. In the previous game, let's just say she wasn't a looker. While Mr. Freeze had to share his exclusive ability in the sequel, Poison Ivy gets to keep one ability exclusive. Sure, it's not the same exact ability this time, but it's still exclusive nonetheless. In the first game, she can make plants grow to be used as platforms or something similar. In this game, she instead has the flower bed ability. All this is is just being able to pass through a flower shaped portal to another area. If you recall the coral ability from Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, flower bed is a reskin of that ability. But in this game, Poison Ivy has it exclusively as opposed to what seemed like half the roster in Lego Pirates. As for other abilities, Poison Ivy has Toxin Immunity and Agility. Nothing too spectacular. The Flower Bed ability definitely carries her value. Finally, I just want to mention her goons real quick. I've briefly mentioned them before, but I truly feel like her goons are the most unique out of all the ones you can encounter in the open world. Instead of just guys with jackets and crook hats, they are actual plant-based abominations. It's a shame that these guys aren't unlockable characters in the roster. I mean, yeah, they'd be at the bottom along with all the other goons, but at least they're more worthy than the Riddler or Two-Face goons based on appearance alone. Not only is this the last Robin special suit in this game, but it's also the last special suit period. And as this is an end to one of the most prevalent mechanics in all of LEGO Batman 2, I'd like to take this moment to reflect. Now, Special Suits was a mechanic carried over from this game's predecessor with some major tweaks, as I've discussed previously in the series. Namely, the fact that you don't really get to choose when you get to play as the Special Suits. The game basically said, yeah, we'll allow you to play as this Special Suit in this area, but this area only. As opposed to the first game, where you can just switch to any suit you want, assuming you're playing in free play. In the end, I far prefer LEGO Batman 1's take on the special suits. Sure, you can argue that you don't necessarily have a reason to be in a special suit if the ability it has isn't needed in the area that you're in, but if I want to fight enemies as Chonky Batman, then let me, damn it. But let's talk about the magnum opus of special suits in LEGO Batman 2, Robin's acrobatic suit. To be completely honest, this suit is only up this high for that hamster ball of his. Apparently, the name for this thing is the Zorb Ball. Uh, which are those balls of air that you can get inside and roll around in. But I'd say this is a bit too complicated to be labeled as a Zorb ball. Robin forms the ball around him using his the baton that he gains when he's switching to the suit, which is exactly the type of technology the government would keep secret from us. The Zorb ball, however, is used a ridiculous amount in the open world. The Zorb ball is specially made for these square platforms with these rollers. When you roll onto it, you lock in and are able to control something. Sometimes it happens in story mode, but it mostly happens in the open world collectible hunting. If there's Acrobat Robin around, chances are he will be using those platforms to open a triangular container holding a gold brick. Other than that, Robin gains the agility ability and can throw his baton at a peg to be used as something to swing off of. And also, he of course has the same abilities as all other Batman and Robin variants have. But it's really the Zorb Ball that rolled the Acrobat suit all the way to number 8. Oh, who, who's that? Is it a bird? Is it is it a plane? Is it, is it a Superman? No, it can't be. Superman doesn't wear glasses. No, this is Clark Kent, who has no business being in Gotham as a Daily Planet journalist. All jokes aside, Clark Kent was unlockable in the open world, but I don't think I mentioned it before, but there are these host of characters that were unlocked in the open world if you've obtained enough gold bricks. These characters would pop out of these golden door frames that you build to be available for purchase. Now, a lot of these frames were placed in weird places, mostly on rooftops and very rarely on ground level. I think they wanted these door frames to be somewhat hard to find because they would stick out like a sore thumb in the open world. Like Commissioner Gordon's door was at ground level, and it's shocking that no petty criminal stripped that door of all of its valuable material, as they should. But Clark Kent was behind one of these doors, though you play as him in the bonus level. Like I said, you enter into a telephone booth as Clark Kent and come out as Superman, which is a detail I think I appreciate a little more than I should. As for abilities, I'm not actually going to go over them. I say that because 
there are four characters we haven't seen yet that all have the same abilities that Clark Kent has plus one more. But I'll tell you what Clark Kent is lacking compared to those guys. Flight. Clark Kent can't fly. Why? Well, I guess Clark Kent would worry that his identity would be revealed if he starts flying, but heat vision is okay? Okay. All right, guys, I, I know I don't have that much internet clout. I'm kind of a guy who's known for hating a goddamn gonk droid, but I have a request to make. We need to start a petition, do something to get Dwayne The Rock Johnson to play this game. We have to make sure he gets the DLC installed on his copy of the game, and we get him to play the sixth best character in LEGO Batman 2, Black Adam. I would like him to explain why Black Adam is the goodest guy to ever exist in the DC Universe because that's what he seems to claim in the Black Adam movie. But yes, Black Adam is a character from the villain DLC pack and I'm overall glad they recognized Black Adam as one of DC's most unique villains. Black Adam is a guy who was bestowed Shazam powers and misused them. So electricity based powers make more than perfect sense for Black Adam. And we see some of that in this game. For starters, Black Adam has flight and strength, not electricity based powers, but you know, if you just if you look at him for two seconds, you can garner that he probably would have those abilities. He also adopts some extras as abilities, like invulnerability and super build. And finally, the electricity based ones. Black Adam can shoot a stream of electricity out of his chest. Okay, that's a little weird, but we'll go with it. This stream is able to function as the laser ability. There's also electricity immunity and... Is that it? No way. No way. Okay, this is not okay. I just can't believe... That he can't use electricity terminals. Hey, hey, what happened? Are, are we in Shazam segment? Do you mean to tell me that Shazam and Black Adam are identical in abilities so it makes sense to just merge their rankings together but they need to be separated because of the rules I set for myself at the start of the series? Okay, well I guess that's fine. Just give me a heads up next time. But yeah, Shazam and Black Adam can't use electricity terminals. What? This ability seems made for them as the only characters in the game whose power sets are strictly electricity based. Hey, maybe the Joker can just give these guys a handshake and just absorb all of their electricity power out of them. Honestly, I think the developers just simply forgot. It was clear that these DLC packs were just a rushed, half-ass pre-order bonus, so forgetfulness has a pretty good chance of playing a role here. But this is Shazam. You know him. The guy Dwayne Johnson refused to appear in a movie with, even though that's his arch nemesis. But I think it's clear to say that Zachary Levi's Shazam is more enjoyable than The Rock's Black Adam. That's honestly why I ranked Shazam higher, and for no other reason. Oh, and just to reiterate, Shazam has everything Black Adam has, up to the arc reactor-esque electricity beam. Oh, <sighs> okay. I'm just going to break down how these final four segments are going to go. In my Lego Avengers series, when there are nine or so different Captain Americas, I'd space out his entire ability set over the course of several segments, just so I'm not repeating the same six abilities for each of the nine Captain Americas. That's just an example though, as I had to do that with basically any character with more than one variant in that game. That hasn't really been an issue for this series, except for these final four. It's really unfortunate that I have to space out abilities like that, for the four best characters in the series. This really is just telling you that there's little variety among the top few characters. Like in LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean, the top three were Cursed Jack, Davy Jones, and Blackbeard. Spoilers, by the way. But they all have unique abilities separate from each other. But in LEGO Batman 2, all the top characters are basically interchangeable based on whoever you prefer. The least favorable out of these is General Zod. To me, at least. He was unlocked through the open world boss fights, and Similar to Brainiac, why is General Zod here? In Gotham, he seems too powerful of a villain to just be chilling on a rooftop waiting for your fisticuffs. I'll never say that again. But I think General Zod is better suited to be in the DLC. Maybe someone like Captain Cold would be more suitable for this environment. You know, just Gotham. I don't know, this game is a decade old. Zack Snyder thinks this guy's doomsday. Let's just move on. I'll talk about abilities in the next segment.
Here's the final DLC character we haven't covered yet, Bizarro. What to say, what to say. There was no means of unlocking him, uh, besides either forking over five bones USD or, you know, the other way. So this dude is essentially pay to win. What also might be construed as pay to win is the fact that Bizarro has the super build and invincibility abilities without requiring the extra. So if you're dead set on being a fast building invincible person without having to find and purchase the extras, these last four characters are your people or, or minifigures. But Bizarro is the result of Joker briefly uh, having the powers of, um, I'm not even going to attempt that. So since the Joker is Bizarro's father in a way, Maybe you can somewhat rationalize putting this guy in the DLC. Or, you know, he's one of Superman's most recognizable villains anyway. These segments are flying by, mostly because there's only so much game-related discussion that can be stretched across four identical characters. But I got a bone to pick with this one, and it is game-related. Supergirl is the last character to be made available for purchase in this game. Now, there are 250 gold bricks to collect in this game. How many do you need to be able to build her golden door to unlock her? What do you think the answer to that question is? Yes, you need all 250 gold bricks to unlock her. You actually need to 100% complete the game before you can play as Supergirl. And to that I ask, say it with me, what's the point? If you already had done everything besides unlock her, then that just leaves you with nothing to do. I guess you can fly around, beat up some goons, maybe hit up the amusement park. Basically just the footage that you see in these videos is what you can do, uh, which is nothing. Trust me, I'd know. I, I had to record footage for every last character post 100% completion. All incentive to do anything in this game is lost. Yeah, thanks thanks for a great character to play. I, I could have used her back when I was collectible hunting hours ago. Whatever, congrats Supergirl. The next three abilities I'll cover are some powers that Superman has, but aren't necessarily the ones that people remember him having. The first being Heat Vision. All of these top four characters can interact with gold lego and they have the freeze ability pretty neat that this ice breath is exclusive to these kryptonians and i mean close enough they operate the same as say mr freeze's ice cannon just quicker robin's ice suit and mr freeze's mobility is a little more restricted in their equipment but the the kryptonians and close enough get the ice breath going all, almost immediately but they don't have ice switch which makes sense finally these guys have x-ray which operates the same as batman's sensor suit they just don't see people's skeletons all the time. Lame alert. Lame alert. Lame alert. Oh, oh, hey, sorry guys. I didn't mean to leave my lame alert going. What segment are we on again? Oh, oh, the final one. A and it's Superman. A character you play in story mode a decent amount is at the number one spot. And, it, and this is the best character in the game. Yeah, let's keep this lame alert, alert ringing for just a while longer. All jokes, but who is surprised? This is the definitive deus ex machina. All he does is show up and save everyone from despair every time. Now, he has a weakness to kryptonite, which isn't incorporated in the gameplay at all. So he's basically unstoppable in this game, as are Supergirl, Bizarro, and General Zod. As for the Batman vs. Superman debate, it's clear who the developers would think would win in a fight between Superman and Batman, and the game's name is LEGO Batman 2, not LEGO Superman 1. The final two abilities of these Kryptonians and him, him too, is flight and strength. Not at all surprising. In fact, Superman's theme plays every time you fly as him, which I guess sets him apart from the last three characters, but if anything, I'm not a fan of it. Open World Gotham mostly has you hearing just ambient night sounds and the sudden switch to the triumphant John Williams theme is jarring, but who am I to complain about immersion in a Lego game? So just to recap, Superman, Supergirl, Bizarro, and General Zod all have the exact same ability set. To be honest, they could all be rearranged in ranking based on who you like the most, but they are undoubtedly better than all other characters based on the following seven abilities that they have. Flight, Laser, Freeze, Strength, X-Ray, Invulnerability, and Super Build. 
I feel iffy to call Superman the undisputed best, as his fellow Kryptonians and whatever the hell Bizarro is are mechanically identical. But you know what? Someone has to reign as the best character in LEGO Batman 2, and Superman is as good as any, so long as we lane start sounding alert. the lane alert. Lane alert. Lane alert. Lane alert. There you have it. Another LEGO game ranked. A small roster, but I'd say it makes sense. If they had the type of roster we would end up seeing in future LEGO DC games, I would hope they'd have a few more abilities to differentiate the characters more. The list ended with a bit of a whimper, with the most predictable character taking the top spot followed by three more Kryptonians and... Uh, close enough. But as just one final thought for LEGO Batman 2, I gotta say, all other LEGO DC games can do everything this game does better. You want fun, unique levels and some good old fashioned nostalgia, play LEGO Batman 1. If you want a diverse set of playable characters, go with LEGO Batman 3. If you're a fan of open worlds, LEGO DC Super Villains is your guy. What does that, what does that leave LEGO Batman 2 being the best at? I'd say nothing. But, I mean, that's just my, that's just my take. If LEGO Batman 2 is your favorite, I get it. Anyways, expect to see a bit of a break in videos for a while as I work on the interim Jackbox video in the preparation for the next LEGO ranking. Chances are by the time you're seeing this, I'll already be in the process of the pre-ranking of the next game. So make your guesses in the comments. Uh, I might give a little hint or two at some point. We'll see. But thank you for watching as always and have a great day.